Hi there, my name is Kelsey, and today we're going to be making a simple maze game using Scratch. So this is an intermediate level project for those who are new to Scratch, because before beginning, you'll want to have a knowledge of operators and booleans, if statements, forever loops, and creating costumes and backgrounds. So let's get started. To start, we're going to create our maze backgrounds. To do this, you could search up mazes on Google or another web browser. I've already done this, so I'm going to skip that step. Next thing I'm going to do is go to this backdrop section, and I'm going to choose to upload a backdrop. So I'm going to click here and click on the upload image section. And then I'll select the images I want to upload. So you'll see when I do that, it's uploaded both of my backdrops just how I want them. I'm going to get rid of this extra one. Okay, so now it's time to make our winning and losing screens. To do this, we're going to come down to this lower section and choose to paint a background. In this case, I want to make a green one that will say congratulations you won when the player wins. So to do that, I'm going to start by picking a color. I'm going to pick a green for the background. So I'm going to pick that and I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. And then I'll make this big enough that it will cover the entire screen. And now that that's done, it's time to add our text. I'm going to make this white so that it will show up. And then we can write our message. Congratulations, you won. So now we can center this the best we can. It's a little bit small, so it might be hard to tell. And then we'll make it however big or small we want. In this case, it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to shrink it down. And then we'll center it. And there we go. That's one backdrop completed. And now it's time to make the other. In this case, I'm just going to duplicate this and change the text and the color. So in this case, I'm going to do, sorry, you lost. And then I'm going to change the backdrop color to red because I want this to be the losing screen. And this will show when the player has lost the game or the time has run out. So there we go. We have our two maze backdrops, our win and our lose backdrop. So now it's time to make our sprites. I'm going to choose a ball sprite for the main sprite that will go through the maze. In this case, I'm just going to keep the costumes we have here so that we can cycle through them and make the sprite change colors. Next, we need to add the sprite that will mark the end of the maze. In this case, I'm going to choose this X button. And we don't need to do anything with those right now because the costumes are fine just as they are. But what we can do is if we go to our backdrops and choose our maze backdrop, we can adjust their size so that we can tell where they should be. So in this case, the ball is a little bit too big. So I'm going to try scale it down a bit. I'm going to start by trying 25. And we'll see that will make it small enough that it will fit right where we need it to go. And I'm just going to drag that down to the start of the maze. Next, we'll do our X button. So in this case, I'm going to try size that down as well. And we'll see that's just the right size as well. So then we can move that up where we need it. OK, so now that that's done, it's time to get onto the code for the ball. To start, we're going to start by grabbing our green flag clicked. And then we want to actually show our sprite because it will initially be hidden. So we'll show, and then we want to set where we want the sprite to go. In this case, we want it to go to whatever location it is right now, because that is a good starting place for it. So I'm going to choose go to x9, y negative 163, because that's where it is at the moment, and that's where I want it to start. If we wanted it to start somewhere else, we could drag it to that location and see what coordinates that is. So the next thing we're going to do is create our time variable. This will be a variable that will count down. So I'm going to go here and make a variable. And we're going to start by setting time to 40. This is how many seconds we're going to have to complete the maze. And now that that's done, we can get on to making the sprite move. 
we're going to start by grabbing a forever loop and two if statements. In the first one, we're going to check if the up key is pressed. So we're going to change that to the up arrow. And if so, we're going to change y by 2, because this will make the ball go up. Otherwise, we want to change y by negative 3. And we want this to happen if the ball is touching the color of the maze. So in this case, we're going to drag that. And you'll see we can use this eyedropper to select the proper color. And there we go, we have our color. So 60, 63, 69. And I notice now that I've accidentally changed x by 3. What we're going to want to do is instead change y by 3. So we're going to swap that out, change y by negative 3. And now I'm going to duplicate this. And we can use that to create our next arrow code. So next, we're going to do the down arrow. So in this case, we want to change y by negative 2. And instead of going down 3, we want to go up 3. So we'll do positive 3. And we can duplicate this again and use it to create our left arrow. So we'll drag that down to the bottom here. And then we'll choose left arrow. And this will ensure that we're using the same color for every single one of these. And so to move left, we want to change x by negative 2. So we're going to grab that and swap it out for the y. So let's just do that. We're going to change x by negative 2. And it will continue by changing x by 3 if it touches the blue wall. One important thing to note is you're going to want the color to be the same for every one of these if statements. Otherwise, the code might get confused and it might not bounce off the walls the way it's intended to. So now that all that's left to do is our right arrow. So in this case, we're going to change the y by 2. And then if it's touching the blue, it'll change it by negative 3. All right, so now that that's done, we can make the code to check if it's touching this x button up here. So in that case, we're going to grab another if statement and check. So if and then we're going to choose our touching. And in this case, it's going to be button 5, because that's what this button is called. And if so, then we want the ball to go to. And we're going to choose the same starting location that it starts at. Then we want it to broadcast. And we're going to create a new message here. We're going to call this next maze. So this will just signal to the game that it needs to put the next maze background up. So there we go. And that is the moving button code complete. Now, the next thing we need to do is work on the when green flag clicked code for this. So there's a couple of these that this sprite is going to need. So I'm just going to start by dragging out three of these blocks. Under the first one, we're going to grab a forever loop and an if statement. So we'll drag those out. And what we're going to be checking here is we're going to check if time is equal to 0. Because if this is the case, it means that the timer has run out. And it means the game is over. So in that case, we're going to create a new event. And we're going to broadcast game over. So that will just ensure that the game ends once the timer gets to zero. The next thing we're going to do is the basic setup. So we're going to start by switching the backdrop to the maze backdrop. 
So we can go to our backdrops and we can check which one that is. So in this case, I can move over here and we'll see that the, the first one is at four. I'm gonna rename this to maze and rename the next one to maze two. That way it's easier to keep them apart. So we're gonna go back to our ball code and we're gonna switch the backdrop to maze. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our time to 40 because that's the number of seconds that we want the player to have before the timer runs out. Finally, we're just gonna add the code that will make the timer count down. So we're gonna choose a repeat until, and we're gonna repeat until the time is equal to zero. So let's grab our time block. And what we wanna do inside this if statement is we want to wait one second, and then we want to change time by negative one. So this will just make it count down one second at a time. And finally, with this next when green flag clicked, we're just gonna make sure that the ball's color is always changing. So this isn't necessary, it's just something fun you can add on. So I'm gonna start by grabbing a forever loop and inside we are going to want to wait. In this case, I'm gonna wait for 0 0.5 seconds and then we're just gonna change the backdrop. And then we're just gonna change the costume to the next costume. So you'll see if we run that to test it now, it will always be changing the ball's color. If we wanted it to go faster, we could do something like 0 0.2 seconds. And you'll see the ball will change colors even faster. So now that that's done, we just need to define what will happen when the ball receives the win game or lose game messages. So we're going to go to events and choose when I receive game over, in which case all we want to do is hide the sprite and hide the time variable. This will make sure that this section up here doesn't appear. And then we're going to make a new message for winning. So I'm just going to call this one win. And then we're going to do the same thing. When we receive the win message, we want to hide the ball and we want to hide our time variable. So now that that's done, we're free to move on to this button over here. So this is the endpoint code. And this section doesn't have all that much code, so this will be fairly simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by grabbing a when green flag clicked. All we want to do when that happens is we want to show the sprite and then we want it to go to a specific location. In this case, we can see it's at negative 14 and 169. So I'm just gonna grab this go to block and we're done with that. Next, we're just gonna decide what's gonna happen when it receives the game over and the win messages. In this case, all we want is for it to hide. So we're gonna to go to looks and we're just gonna grab our hide block and drag that underneath. And that's all the code done for our end point. And finally, we just need to add the code for our backdrops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a when green flag clicked block. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a forever loop and an if statement. So in this case, we're wanting to check if the background number is equal to three, because if so, basically what the code will do is it will cycle through the two mazes. And once the second maze is complete, it will switch to the end backdrop. In this case, it will be backdrop number three. In this case, it means the player has already won the game. So we're going to use that to our advantage and use that to broadcast the win message. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Then we're gonna go to events and choose broadcast and win. And then we'll go to control and we're gonna choose a stop all block. This will stop any other code that's running at the time and just make the game end. Finally, we're gonna define what happens when we receive 
the next maze message and the game over message. We're going to start with the next maze. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to switch the backdrop to the next backdrop. And then we're just going to want to set the time to 40. This will basically reset the timer and give the player another chance. So we're going to do that. And now we have just one more block to do. In this case, we're going to do when I receive game over. We're going to switch the backdrop to backdrop two, which we can double check over here. We'll see backdrop two is the sorry you lost backdrop. So we can test that out. And then all we're going to do is we're going to choose our stop all block. And as mentioned above, this will just stop anything that's running at the time. So now that that's done, it's time to test our game out. So you'll see what we can do is we can move the ball through the maze using the arrow keys. But you'll see if we bump a wall, we can't go through it. So that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any issues with your code, feel free to go back and check it again using the code shown in this video. I hope you've had fun with this video and hopefully your games turn out just as well as this one did.